A lot separated George Santos from his opponent, Democrat Robert Zimmerman, when it came to political platforms. But there was a moment from an October debate where it seems they oddly had something very specific in common. They were each asked to share a favorite family tradition. Now, note the similarities between Santos and Zimmerman's answers. So, Mr. Zimmerman, name one of your favorite family traditions. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. New Year's Eve. I hope my, hope my nephews and I, my brother and sister and I get together in our sweats, watch a stupid holiday movie, some sort of stupid comical holiday movie, and eat the food that we shouldn't eat all year round. So that's a great thing. It begins with delicatessen. It goes into, it goes into haagen -Dazs. It's always a staple, usually popcorn as well. <laughs> Mr. Santos, your favorite family tradition? Um, our favorite family tradition is just family time. We've always been, you know, it, it doesn't matter if it's a Tuesday night or if it's a Sunday night or if it's Christmas. Every moment we can get together, that's uh, kind of a downtime. It's sweatpants, pints of haagen -Dazs all over the place. Sweatpants and haagen -Dazs. He didn't even change it to Briars. Now, look, maybe it's an honest coincidence that the cherished family tradition of both the Zimmerman and Santos families is eating haagen -Dazs in their sweats. Who doesn't love doing that? Here's Santos in another debate on his opponent's habit of misleading the American people. My opponent's going to say a lot of things that are misleading, that he cannot corroborate. I have no record. I've never held elected office. So again, I have never put out an opinion where I would have to defend out here, or have I ever voted on a bill that I would have to defend. So he keeps referencing and putting words in my mouth that are just mistruths and essentially misleading to the American people. The hypocrisy is just far too much, Mr. Simmons. Thank you, Mr. Santos. Turns out. Of course, he did have a record. Um, the hypocrisy, and yet knowing what we know now about his myths, mistruths, misleading the American people, about his educational background, it's kind of fun to look back on his response when he was asked about student loan forgiveness. I'm not against education. I'm very pro-education. Education is a springboard out of poverty. It worked for my family. It works for many family, families across this country. It's pro-education. It's all true, of course. Education can be a springboard out of poverty. Of course, we still don't know how Santos springboarded himself out of poverty and donated $700,000 to his own campaign. It wasn't education. We know that. Since Santos claiming he went to Baruch College where he was a volleyball star, of course, in reality, he never went there. Then, as we continue our digging into the campaign archives, there was this testy moment between Santos and Zimmerman. Now remember, Santos had claimed he was Jewish and his family were Holocaust survivors. And he responded to Zimmerman, suggesting that Santos had aligned himself with those in Congress who'd been accused of anti-Semitism. Regrettably, George, you embraced Marjorie Taylor Greene, oh, the QAnon on. congresswoman. You, you put out a tweet with Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan I Omar, I never even met and AOC. These people. I never met these you people, George. You worked with the squad, the most anti-Semitic people running in now, the most George. conservatively Jewish district now, in George, America. Come you're just on, being, Robert. You're just being no, disingenuous. You're being disingenuous. All right, guys, let's let's be but I do want to make a point. You put out a tweet saying you were proud of Marjorie Taylor Greene and you liked her more than other Republicans. This is after the Republican leadership denounced her for anti-Semitism. I mean, that's just so shameful. Are you, are you calling me anti-Semitic? No, you know, because, oh, can you imagine someone calling him anti-Semitic? I mean, his heritage, his Jewish side, they escaped the Holocaust. Come on. Of course, that all turned out to be a lie as well. Which brings us to this final moment when both candidates were asked what they really stand for as men. George Santos took this as an opportunity to tout his philanthropy. My entire career has been round, rounded about working with people, giving back to communities. I come from a very uh, humble beginning, and I'm very proud to be able to be in the position to do what I'm doing today. So it's always been about the people. I, I often take the clothes off my back to give to people. It's just, it's not a metaphor for me. I, if you like my coat, here, you can have it. Of course, when it comes to Santos philanthropy, we now know that when two vets went to Santos for help to secure funds to help one of them pay for life-saving surgery for his dog, Santos did step up, sort of. Rich Ostoff and his friend Michael Bull, founder of New Jersey Veterans Network, were connected with Santos. They were told it was instrumental in helping and rescuing animals. 
Santos set up a GoFundMe for Ostov's Pitbull Sapphire and managed to raise close to 3,000 bucks for the pup. Ostov says he never saw the money and that his dog passed away about six months after his last contact with Santos. So I think it is fair now, in retrospect, to rethink, would he really give you that coat off his back? Would he? Is the coat his? That's another question to ask, right? Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.